Hi, everybody. I'm Kim Winter. I'm your host today for our Executive Insight Series. And um, if you're interested, please go to Logistics Executive TV for the rest of our series of interviews with uh, top executives around the supply chain around the world. I'm uh, delighted today to be joined by uh, Marianne Kensel. Marianne, welcome from Brisbane, Australia. Brisbane, Australia it is. And thank you very much for having me, Kim. Lovely to be here. Yeah, great. Good to see you again. And um, Marianne, you are the Executive Officer, otherwise known as the Queen Bee, for the Refrigerated Warehouse and Transport Association of Australia, the RWTA of Australia. Um, fantastic organisation. Um, I'm you. pleased to say that uh, I've been invited to be MC and host of, um, of one or two of your events over the years. Um, certainly been aware of uh, the RWTA and its position in the cold chain in particular and the supply chain in Australia um, and part of a, a much wider group worldwide for the last 20 years. So uh, congratulations on the work that you've done so far. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Marianne, your, your background, and perhaps a bit of an intro into RWTA and what you guys do. Sure. Um, uh, the RWTA has been around for several decades under different guises. Um, in the last two and a half years, I've been the executive officer. So I came in as uh, somebody who'd never run an association before, but I had had some experience in warehousing, logistics, cold chain, which was very useful. Um, past jobs included an industry skills body for the energy industry. And I also worked for well-known companies like Val Morgan and Avis. And I kind of feel that all of the companies that I've ever worked for before, which were based mainly on sales and business development. So that was new business particularly and around the country as well. So it wasn't just usually based in Queensland, that it all led to everything that I'm doing at RWTA. So all of the skills that I gathered from those jobs fit perfectly into this. So it, uh, it's a very exciting job for me for a lot of reasons, because a lot of the skill sets that I have, I've been able to hone, grow and develop while I've been at uh, working with the Refrigerated Warehouse and Transport Association. Good stuff. Right. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I can tell you from a, a participant of your events and uh, somebody who's worked with the, the committee and the leadership and the chairman of the organisation over the years from time to time, um, you do an outstanding job. I know you're very well supported. Uh, so congratulations oh, yeah. on that. Uh, now, the RWTA, I've got to say, uh, after being in the supply chain for a thousand years myself, um, is one of the most unique and one of the best run organisations, industry uh, representative organisations, member organisations that I've come across anywhere in the world. Um, Thank you. RWTA represents, I don't know, how many members do you have in Australia? Must be quite look, a few. There's, yeah, look, there's um, oh, probably um, 80 to 100 members, but yeah. thousand. I, around a thousand people on, on our database as such. Yeah. That um, includes the warehouses, also yeah. the transport and uh, logistics um, side of things, but also the companies that feed into it. We call it our associate members. Yeah. And it's all part of the RWTA family that work yeah. together to support each other. So I use the terminology family for yeah. the particular reason that if you are part of the RWTA, also go to those other members first so that the support is reciprocal. And we find, I, I would honestly say it is the friendliest group I've ever come across. They are welcoming. They bring in new people very easily. And uh, even in, during COVID, we have been bringing on more and more new members, which I'm really proud of and very excited about as well. Good. Well, look, one of the reasons I want to talk to you today is because you know, cold chain in particular, and there seems to be a very heavy, heavy influence with the RWTA around food versus pharma, if I've got that right. You can recount me on that if not. But um, there's so much going on in the cold chain space and food space globally that we've seen this year in particular. Um, and I, I know just about everybody in Australia that has anything to do, as you say, with warehousing transport or anything, and all the suppliers to do with RWTA belong to 
the RWTA and support it big time. I know you've got a very active, unlike a lot of industry associations, which quite frankly can be a bit boring and a bit staid and a bit old school. Uh, you guys have certainly got the formula. Your, your committee work hard, They're representative of all the different members. Um, your chairman, I think your current chairman, if I'm not wrong, is, is Jeff Hogarth from Lineage Logistics. Uh, is a, certainly a taskmaster, Jeff, would keep you busy. Um, but your, your committee is very, very active and there's a lot going on. One of the particular things I want you to talk to us about is about the formula you have for your conferences. Your conferences are the bomb. You, the, the last ones I've been invited to attend and, and help out with have been in the most amazing resort places. So you've had what, um, what were the last two? Uh, the North Queensland. Hamilton and, Island. Hamilton Island. Somebody's uh, got to do it. And the other one was at Noosa. Right. And so uh, both in Queensland. And generally what we do, Kim, is that we have one in Queensland, then one in New South Wales, one in Queensland, one in Victoria. So we alternate. Obviously, being in the cold chain, a lot of the members are based, uh, or the majority of the members are based in Victoria because that's where the hub of, of food lies in, in Australia. Um, so everyone, during winter, we have it at, uh, usually at the end of August, most people are wanting to come somewhere warm. So Queensland is a terribly popular spot. And I have gone out and asked and said, where would you like it? What sort of things appeal to you? Um, what, what's important to you? And uh, resort style is very important. Uh, warm weather is kind of important. And um, people enjoy their golf. They enjoy a little bit of fun, lots of networking because, as I said, they are a friendly bunch of people and they do like to get together. It's the one time of year that they can get together and, and have a great time. But at the same time, I insist that we need to talk about things that are part of the cold chain at the present time. And in Australia, at the moment, there's a lot of consolidation. I mean, that's, that's worldwide, let's, let's face it. Uh, consolidation uh, of companies. So... Part of it is that it's uh, automation, digitization, the things that are happening overseas, if they're not affecting us at the moment, they will. And we have to be across that. And I think we need to talk about it and become educated in it and, and start to meet people that are experts in that space. So the conferences themselves, and just by the way, the next one, launching yes. it with you today, yes, is please. at Noosa again. Uh, which I'm terribly excited about because it's um, it's a smaller venue, but I, from my point of view, organising a conference, bar none, it is the most extraordinarily supportive place that we go. Nothing is a problem. So the members come and they feel absolutely cherished. As a, a person who's organising the conference, I know that I'm absolutely supported if we've got changes and things always happen during conferences where you've got to be um, very flexible and stuff happens where people don't turn up or they get sick or what have you. Um, it will be, it's going to be in March this year. So it's a little bit unusual, uh, but 2020 has been unusual and we didn't for obvious reasons have our conference, which by the way was going to be at Cape Shank, which is in Victoria. So we've postponed that and that may be, in 2022 at this stage. Right. But we'll keep everybody up to date. Great. Well, look, you know, gl glad to hear that. You heard it here first, folks, uh, for the audience. Mm. And if you want to go to a really good industry conference and learn uh, a whole lot of stuff about an industry uh, that's on fire at the moment, uh, then the RWTA is the place to go. I'm sure that we'll be media partners with you guys again, and we'll be happy to promote it out to our over 300,000 followers mm. on on LinkedIn and, and on our database. So uh, really Thank recommend. You. And where the companies are in Australia and New Zealand or offshore, I recommend they belong to the RWTA to find out how an industry organisation should be run and how, how really interesting news gets conveyed around members. Um, we had, yeah. um, just so that uh, your members or your the people who are listening today, mm -hmm. we've had people come from New Zealand, yeah. South Africa, America, Germany, um, Asia, all over Asia as well, and of course, all over Australia as well. So we do have generally, I, again, I keep going back to COVID and it's unusual, but in the past, we've had a great contingent come from overseas, which adds a wonderful flavour as well. Yep, you're, you're world-class speakers for sure. And uh, it's, all, it's always yeah. great to see. 
Uh, you, you touched on a very important point before, and let's just pan out for a little bit um, in terms of the global situation. We both talked about how um, cold chain is, is an absolute uh, uh, hot area, if I can put it that way, is a bit of a dichotomy. Uh, globally, there's massive consolidation. You've got the big players. Um, you're represented, I think, in Australia by the two biggest organisations uh, globally. Um, that's Americold, who are listed and based out of Atlanta. And uh, you've got uh, Lineage Logistics, which recently acquired Emergent Logistics or Emergent Cold, which prior to that um, acquired Swire Logistics, Oxford Logistics, and a couple of others in Australia. So in Australia and New Zealand in particular, there's been significant uh, consolidation. Uh, good to see all of those companies are represented, of course, in the RWTA, major players in the RWTA. But let's just talk about that at the moment. This year has seen an incredible amount of growth and supply as an essential service to providing particularly the supermarket, Absolutely. fresh product, chilled, chilled and frozen product, quick service restaurants, uh, e-commerce, online providers, but also a very heavy emphasis on retail. How much pressure is that put on your your members? What sort of uh, what sort of creaking have you seen on the floorboards of uh, and in the structures of what's been going on in the industry? Have you seen in Australia and New Zealand? Um, it was pretty unkind. Come March, and it has gone on in different states. With it, Australia is a big place. Australia is the size of America, but we have a lot less people and we're based around the, the eastern coast for those who aren't familiar with um, Australia um, and a few it's it's mainly around the coastline when we've got huge distances with not a lot of places to support in between times when government does things and it's just been lifted as of yesterday where they uh, insisted that uh, Victoria cut 30% of their workforce on the floor. So you're looking for two and a half times at, at the, you know, the weeks at a, at a time where you're doing two and a half times Christmas and the rest with a third less of your staff. That's pretty unkind. Mm. You're having, having to social distance. You're having to deep clean in between shifts. You've got shifts that have to be reallocated so that people don't meet in between their shifts as they usually did. Mm you need to remove some of your administrative uh, staff back to home. There was uh, an enormous strain put upon the, the industry overall. There were certain cases of COVID in some of these locations as well, which were managed extraordinarily well and well above what the government had put in place and required. So everything was uh, well organised and it, I think the cold chain themselves have started to really respect that people know who they are now. And that's something that COVID has done us a favour for. We sit between the likes of abattoirs and fruit producers and the likes of Woolworths, Coles, Aldi. Nobody knows who we are because the cold chain sits in between. They're the, the quiet achiever. They're the BHP of cold chain logistics where they're kind of secreted behind, in, in, and, in and behind everybody else. Everyone knows who the cold chain is now because this is where your food came from. This is why you know, we, we're out there explaining to government departments and ministers, there is no shortage of food. Please be aware, let people know there is no shortage of food. It's trying to get the food to the shops uh, on time at the same level of service um, when you've got double, two, three times Christmas re requirement. So please let people know there's plenty of food, it's all coming, just be patient, there's no problem. Yeah, there's no, I mean, thanks for that. I mean, there's no question that, you know, as a result of COVID, as tragic as it is and as a massive problem as it still is globally, um, I think anybody in the supply chain logistics world now realises that what has been going on and seen to be behind the scenes industry sector has really come to the fore and people are understanding just what an essential service um, logistics and supply chain and cold chain in particular has been. Tell us a little bit about... And what it needs. Yeah, well, yeah. absolutely what it needs. And, you know, it's, it's, it's actually life and death scenario. People have got to eat. 
and they've got to, yeah. they've got to get their supplies on time. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about advocacy and about what the RWTA typically does, some examples of what you do for members uh, in the organisation. So one of the privileged uh, thing, I feel like I've got a very privileged position because I get to, to talk to all of these different companies and I get a lot of great information from these companies as to what they need, what they want, what, what issues are. The main problem is the cost of energy. There is um, a great issue with the cost of insurance as well. So if we take those two, both of those I have been advocating with the likes of the the Treasurer, so that's uh, Minister Frydenberg. So within six weeks of starting at the RWTA, we had 17 companies in front of Minister Frydenberg to explain the issue. Some are paying $400,000 a month mm. for their energy bill. Um, these sort of problems, issues uh, that are chronic, it, it brings down the, the likelihood that they're going to make uh, a better profit. They are, in some cases, some of these places down in um, Melbourne will employ 500 people in an outlet. They, they, you know, it's a, it's a big amount, it's a huge amount of people that they are employing. Um, insurance costs on, so to do with EPS panelling, so it's the panels that insulate the, these huge buildings, uh, the insurance for some of those are up to you know, 5 million per annum. Yep. Again, uh, there are no solutions for it. We've been to the Insurance Council of Australia. We have met with, um, and we're actually dealing presently with Senator Susan MacDonald to get, uh, and we've had uh, about 15 companies who've put figures down as to how the insurance costs have been rising from 2017 to 2020 and how they are continuing to increase. All of these things are uh, issues that we, we can't seem to find uh, solutions for mm -hmm. and we need some support from the government department so when we say we're advocating we also make a point of um, creating alliances and support and um, moving together with companies like Australian Meat Industry Council with uh, Egg Federation of Australia with Food SA um, insur um, insurance sorry IPCA, which is the, um, the Panel Council of Australia. Okay. All of these companies are working together as a united front mm -hmm. to ensure that all of Australia is represented, but also the main companies that are being affected as well. Sure. So we saw, we saw on the media during the, the year so far that during crunch times of supply and demand, especially for, for food in supermarkets and the big chains in Australia, that uh, a number of the big players, the Woolworths, uh, the Coles, the Aldis, and uh, uh, foodstuffs and others, combined resources and, com and co collaborated in a way that when they would normally compete. Have members of the RWTA needed to do that? Has there been any of that between competitors helping each other out on, on capacity, pay for transport? Has that happened? Yeah. It has, and um, it doesn't surprise me, uh, but we've been working on that really closely with uh, a lot of the different companies to say, pick up the phone. We, we actually, during COVID, so it started in March, I opened a, a website particularly and specifically only for the warehouses and the transport companies. So the, the companies that feed into those, uh, we left out. So it was particularly to say, for instance, some companies would say, I have space for the next two and a half months. Does anybody need space? Yeah. Um, I have trucks that are um, slow at the moment. Does anybody need trucks? So all of a sudden, these, these people were saying, okay, you know, we can start to talk. We can do business together. Where um, PFD and Bid Foods started to slow down. Well, they, they were the ones that uh, supplied to restaurants. Mm -hmm. When they had uh, trucks... Uh, going quiet, we were speaking to them to say, have you tried, have you, you know, worked with these guys? These guys are absolutely under the pump. You, you might be able to approach them. Sure. So the discussion was uh, very collaborative, very mature um, and very productive. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was amazing to watch. 
All right. Yeah, well, I guess it's great to see those upsides in a very big downside situation that's affected everybody in the world. So uh, I, I guess that's good to hear. But uh, I mean, my experience of from time to time dealing with the RWTA is that, that, that members are very collaborative and professional anyway. So it's good to hear. Um, tell us a little bit about the training. You guys have a lot of training. You're linked up to international training organisations as well. Just a quick snapshot, 100 words or less, just about what sort of training you offer. So the ammonia emergency management training was something that we started working on within weeks of, uh, so over two years ago. And that is particularly for the time between when an ammonia spill happens and when the fire department gets there. There is no training, there's a lot of ammonia training out there. If you hold more than 900 kilos of ammonia on site, it is legislation that you have two uh, chem suits on site, nobody knows how to use them. So it's three days uh, of intensive training and we've won an award for it, which is very exciting. And it has also gone international since. Um, in the last few months, again, because we're working on different things, because we didn't, we weren't able to do our networking functions, we couldn't have a conference because we couldn't do our golf days. One of the things that I was working on particularly was to expand on that training. Mm -hmm. So we're very soon, and I mean in the next couple of weeks, to open uh, on our website a training space where the ammonia training is, is one part of it, but also other training that is required that can be um, done anywhere in Australia and they are discounted and they've, it's, it's fantastic. It's exactly what the, the industry has needed. Awesome. Well, I know you guys have been uh, providing fantastic service to the industry in Australia for a very long time. Uh, congratulations to yourself, to, you, to, to your committees. I know you rotate the committees pretty regularly to the executive yep. group that's running it. Um, look forward to hearing, let's, let's just hear again about when that next conference is going to be, roughly when's it going to be? I don't think you've got a date particularly yet. Yes, I do. It's the what 7th to the 9th of March at Noosa in Queensland, Australia. Okay. Don't miss it. Awesome. So yeah, shout out, shout out to you guys and we'll promote the hell out of it because it'll be a fantastic event and uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can join you there. Thanks again, Marianne Knetzel. Um, I mean, you've, you've done a, a great job. The feedback I always get about the, the work that you do is awesome to you and your team. Um, thank thank you. you for joining us today. Thank you to our audience for joining us. Um, stay safe, everybody, and we look forward to catching up with you on our next Insights uh, interview. Thanks, Marianne. Thank you, Kim.